Is it possible to just take someone else's indicator on TradingView and use its signals? Or, I don't know, any other data from that indicator? Yes, you can. Moreover, if that indicator has open source code, then basically, I've recorded a video on how to do it. You can check it out via the suggestion or just browse my channel. I showed how to do it. But what if the indicator has closed code? Well, the creator of the indicator decided that they're not ready to share their code, their logic, their ideas with the community, and closed the indicator's code. But at the same time, the indicator itself is published, and we can see how it works. In that case, can we extract signals or any other parameters we're interested in from it and use them for our own purposes? Yes, we can. He closed the code. Clever guy, self-taught. Yeah, you can't hide from us with such simple tricks. In this video, I'll show you a legal, absolutely legal way using neural networks and the standard functionality of TradingView. How, let's say, to borrow signals from a closed indicator, even if it's, I don't know, paid or with closed code, whatever it is, that doesn't protect them from us borrowing or us from borrowing from them at all. It's actually a very interesting question. I'll only be showing neural networks and the standard functionality of TradingView. And could I be violating anything in that case? In theory, no. What do you think? Write about it in the comments. Damn, this is actually a really important question. I mean, I'm sitting here with my face open, after all. But overall, today I'll only be using free indicators and a paid subscription to ChatGPT. Yes, there will be some coding in the video, but you won't have to code anything yourself. I'll give you ready-made prompts for ChatGPT and basically provide you with finished code. You'll even be able to just use what we create together in this video. So you don't need to pause the video and watch what code I'm writing, just follow the link in the video description to my Telegram channel. There will be a direct link to this very post, where you'll find all the codes, all the links, and everything you need. You can just grab everything from there, that's it. While you're at it, you can subscribe to my Telegram channel, my YouTube channel, give me a like in advance, and hit the bell icon. That's all, my name is Maxim. This is the channel Thinking Out Loud. Let's dive in and figure things out. And let's start by figuring out why we would even want to use someone else's indicator signals for our own purposes. Why do we even need this at all? I mean, there's the indicator. It's right there. Go ahead and use it. Take it as much as you want. But even when we have the indicator and can see it on our screen, we still can't really tell. Is it actually profitable? I mean, it all looks nice on the chart. Sometimes it even looks really great. But is it actually profitable? So if I trade using this indicator, will I make money or will I lose it? And to check that, I need to use TradingView strategies to test it out, to run a backtest, say, over a year, two, or even three. Well, I can test this indicator for as long as there's data available on that time frame. But does it actually give reliable signals? That's one way to use it, right? Why do we sometimes need to borrow? Also, maybe we want to process the indicator's signal in some way. I mean, just having the indicator's signal, what's the point? We're not staring at the monitor all the time. For example, I work with trading robots. There are already videos with my bots on this channel. How they work and why they work. So, I look at all trading indicators or trading strategies with the goal of applying them. That is, to robotize, to automate, so I don't have to click around manually, but the robot does it for me. The robot does the work, the person is happy, they even sang that in electronica. Or maybe I want to process the signal in some other way. For example, if there's a signal from a paid indicator, I might want to share it with a friend. But if it's a signal from someone else's indicator, I can't really do that. But if it's my own trading strategy, then why not? These are probably the three main reasons why I'm interested in signals from other people's indicators and why I learned how to extract them. And now I'll show you how. By the way, a warning, this method has one drawback, just one, but it's there, and you should know about it. I'll definitely talk about it, so make sure to watch until the end. And a second warning, I'm not encouraging you to do anything. I'm not telling you to extract signals from paid indicators. I'm not even urging you to trade on the exchange. This video is purely for educational purposes. Whatever you choose to do, you do so at your own risk. You alone are responsible for your actions. I have absolutely nothing to do with it. All right, let's pick some indicator with closed code and start digging into it. We'll be working on the Bitcoin chart for our time frame. And here, I'll add the zero luck indicator from Quantum Research for you. I think there's some French guys. Take a look. Isn't it beautiful? They even it just looked, they even made the long and short signals in some kind of gothic font. Plus, I mean, just look at it, a bunch of lines. What a beauty. Really, well, in short, it's a very beautiful indicator. Visually, it's like buy, sell, buy, sell. I mean, it's just the perfect strategy, basically a money-making machine. I wonder if it'll be just as profitable in the past or not. And this particular indicator gives clear signals, long, short, L and S, right? 
and in theory, we could just set up weblooks. I've also made a video on how to set up weblooks, how to start trading on the exchange directly from this indicator. The video will pop up somewhere here as a suggestion. You can watch it, and basically, you can start running it on the exchange right away. But how do you know if it's actually profitable or not? I mean, is it even worth running it on the exchange at all? And here, weblooks don't give us the answer. And that's why we need a strategy for testing. To create one, we go down here, click the Pine Editor button, the code window opens, then we click the arrow here, and select Create New Strategy. A window with an empty strategy opens up. We ruthlessly delete everything. Then we head over to my Telegram channel, grab this prompt from the link there, copy it actually, there are even two prompts for this video. But for now, we need the first prompt, and we head over to ChatGPT. We feed the prompt to ChatGPT. Well, here it's already done. To save time, I've already done everything, so we just copy the code. We paste our code into the strategy, basically. And right here, I wrote, External Signal Strategy Tester. You can write any other name depending on what you're going to do. I'll publish this particular strategy, and it'll be there as well. You can just grab it and start using it right away. And I'll try to explain to you how all of this works. So look, we have an indicator that gives signals. Long, short, long, short, long, short. So what would we want to do? Logically, when we get a long signal, we'd want to enter a long position, that is, buy, and when we get a short signal, sell. Or, if we're only trading long, since this is a trend indicator and it only makes sense to trade it long, we don't short, we just buy, sell, buy, sell, buy. That makes sense, right? So, what do we need for this? For this, we need a standard trading view function called input source. It lets you get data from any source on the screen. So, if I put 10 indicators here, we can take whatever is displayed on the screen from any of these indicators and use it in our strategy. And this is basically the foundation of our, let's say, pirate or rather, beta tester indicator, or more accurately, strategy. So, the main thing this strategy does is it takes the buy and sell signals and borrows them from the indicator that's on the screen. And in order to borrow them, we also need to, so to speak, launch it on the screen. So, we add the strategy by clicking add to chart, and the strategy is added, but it says no data. That means there are no trades. Why are there no trades? Because, basically, we haven't specified the sources. What exactly should we choose? How much should we weigh in grams? And here, we click on Strategy Tester Report and then click the gear icon for settings. Here, this inputs column is important for us. In other words, these are the input data. Where do we get them from? What exactly are we taking? Since we're taking long and short from Zeralac EMA loop, that's what we use, long condition for buying and short condition for selling. Since I tried to make a universal beta testing strategy, I immediately added checkboxes to allow longs, shorts, closing on the opposite signal, and also the option to reverse the position with the same lot size on the opposite signal. I also set up take profit, stop loss, and break even. If you set them to zero, basically, they'll be disabled, and we'll just enter an exit according to the tickets we've bought. And we also need to make sure to specify in the properties window what percentage of the balance we'll use in trades. 100%, of course, is just plain nonsense. It simply doesn't work well in trading or backtesting. Let's at least set it to 90%. Click OK, and now we can already see the result. What? 2000%? Is that more than my most complicated strategy? Oh no, no, that's all the way from August 2017. No, that's... I almost got scared for a second. I was thinking, damn, I suffered so much, worked out a strategy for the bot, and here comes some nonsense. It just does more with two clicks. But turns out, it doesn't. But overall, by the way, it's still a profitable strategy. Just like that, it makes 2,000%. Well, over five years, though. Wait, five years? I'm not living in that year. Eight. And basically, I guess you could add something to it and make it more profitable, more interesting. You could also try it on some other chart, on a different time frame. So anyway, now you can run this strategy and you'll know for sure. See, it enters where it gets the signal, exits where it gets the signal. Long, short, everything as it should be. And as you can see, it's not that complicated when the strategy already has long or short signals. But what if the strategy doesn't give such signals? Or rather, what if the indicator doesn't give such signals? And we had to come up with the signals ourselves. I'll show you now. To demonstrate, I took another strategy. As you can see, it looks less pretty. It's all kind of red, black, gray, and the candles here are green. They're the red, who knows what it all means. And as you can see, it doesn't give any signals at all. So, it works somehow. Its creator thought it up, came up with some algorithm for how this strategy works, but we have absolutely no idea what's going on in the chart. And here we'll actually have to dig into it a bit to figure things out, to think about where we can actually get signals in a strategy like this. Because obviously, they're somewhere in here.
To do this, we open up the strategy and click on the little gear icon. This is the Zerilike EMA DX, as you can see. And here we see the input parameters. I'm not going to change them, because I don't yet understand how the strategy works, but that's not important for us right now. What we need to figure out is, what does it actually output? For that, we go to the Still, Style tab, and see, it just outputs some kind of EMA. See, it disappears, and then this light blue, fast EMA appears. Why is it blue and dark? Let me do this. Oh, now it'll be much more visible. And let's make it bold like this. Okay, then we have EMA too. This one's multicolored, but I won't change the colors here. I'll just make it bolder too. Actually, I won't, I'm not sure how to do that. All right, whatever, never mind. But we get it, right? Here it is, this second EMA. And there's also the EMA long term, this really long EMA that's all multicolored, red, green, black. Basically, it's a mess, just something tacked on the side. There's also BCADX. Ah, that's actually what colors our candles. See, something is being colored inside the candle bodies. So, let's think up some simple trading strategy, now that we have all this data. The simplest trading strategy that comes to mind is, for example, if this fast EMA crosses the slow EMA, and this happens above the slow EMA. So, basically, following the trend, more or less. Of course, there are still questions, like why do we have recolored candles, the ones that change color based on the ADX? And why is our ENA multicolored? And probably, if we read through the indicator, we'll find answers to these questions too, but it's all pretty complicated. But our video is, after all, an instructional one. And the goal of this video is to show how it's done, not to pick some fancy trading strategy. There are other videos for that, and there will be more. So subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell so you don't miss anything. But what should we do with these signals? How do we get these signals? The easiest way is to take the code from my strategy. It's available, and it will be published with open source. I've already mentioned where to get it. So you take it, and then you take the second prompt. Here it is, I have it right here, where I basically say in Russian that there are three input parameters, a fast EMA, a slightly slower EMA, and a very slow EMA. And my dear ChatGPT, please make this change to the strategy so that it uses exactly these input parameters, and not just a signal forend, because there are no signals here, and so that it gives at least some kind of result, right? So that we can improve it later. ChatGPT, in general, understood all the conditions very quickly just from the description. So even if the description is more complicated, it will still understand it's actually very smart. And it quickly fixed the code, which will copy and paste to create a new strategy. I've already made these changes, and now I'll show you the settings. Let's go to settings again. What do we need here? We go to inputs, and we need to select the fast EMA, the slow EMA, and the long-term EMA. So, we take the fast EMA at zero log EMA, the slow EMA EMA2, and for long-term, long-term. And here we've got some kind of result, by the way. Not impressive, of course, but it's something. Maybe if we figured out all the other parameters, the result would be better. But let me repeat once more where to find these parameters. Look, we go into style ENA, ENA2, EMA long term. Right here, in the style tab, we get all these parameters. See, it's really not that complicated. ChatGPT, bless it, solves most of the problems on its own. You just need to give it the right tasks. But as I said, I'll tell you about the vulnerability of this method and how to deal with it, or at least try to. The main vulnerability and inconvenience of this method is that this indicator always has to be open on the chart. In other words, for the strategy to be able to use anything from this indicator, it has to be visible on the screen. And that's not very convenient, because in the free versions of TradingView, you can't open many indicators. And your strategy, by the way, is also considered another indicator. And on that note, I'll probably make a video about how to add indicators to the free version of TradingView for free, so you can have not just two indicators, but seven or even ten. But this also causes a problem if the indicator gets blocked or deleted. So, look, if you can, if the indicator has open source code, you just take the open code, make a copy of the indicator for yourself, and use your own indicators in your strategies or bots. Because if it's not your indicator, the person might change their mind tomorrow, delete their account or their indicators, or just rewrite the code so everything breaks, and there's nothing you can do about it. That's the only vulnerability, the weak point of this method. But for testing indicators, especially paid ones, this method is great, it shows results very quickly. During some three-day trial period, you can already figure out whether this indicator is profitable and whether it's worth paying for or not. See you next time.